Okay, so user Dan930 just asked a quick question about how the aperture works on, on this, which is an old large format camera that I actually inherited from my great-grandfather. Uh, so I thought I'd just show you the different types of apertures we've got here and um, how they work. This is one we're all sort of familiar with. If you've got a DSLR, this is um, how the aperture in it will work. I've just chosen my uh, Olympus IM-1 here because it's really clear, it's really easy to see on this um, f1.8 uh, uh, 35mm lens? No, 50mm lens. Um, and you can see as you look straight down, it um, this is wide open and we can see that that's in fact circular. You just press the exposure uh, preview dial uh, button on the side of the lens there and it shuts the aperture down. And looking through we can see that's completely circular and wide open. You stop down one stop and you then see the blades come in to um, shut the aperture down and again these stops and as it gets smaller you can see the aperture gets more sort of uh, uh, I believe this one's hexagonal I think it's a six bladed aperture I'm just trying to count them now but anyway yeah it gets smaller but it matters less um, as you shut the aperture down that's it at smallest aperture which is f16 on this lens uh, yeah so you can see the way that clicks through those apertures really well and it's um, Fine, but that is the aperture that will give you um, circular bokeh, uh, and it is a really pleasing lens to use. This is absolutely beautiful on film. So that's that uh, lens and the way that works. Um, put that to one side and unscrew the lens from this, and you can see the way this works. Now this is an f11 to f44 lens, and that's also the differences in the f-stop because it's a ratio and the fact that you're using a much larger plate. And you can see this lens actually has a, a disc here which sits completely outside the lens. Uh, and you rotate it through to change your aperture. And that's how you change between aperture f11 uh, down to f44 Ooh, and then back up to f11 again. And even at f11 that will give you ridiculously shallow depth of field um, all to do with the size of the um, glass plate that you have at the back of these things. Uh, this is the glass, well this is the holder for the glass plates. That's the size of it. So you know people who rant on about the size of their sensors in their DSLRs Unless you spent fifty thousand dollars on a phase one, you haven't seen anything. And this thing, you can expose the whole back of this. Um, it's cut down to medium format size, but you can you can expose the entire uh, back of that as a large format camera. And then finally, the uh, daddy of expo of uh, aperture. <laughs> this thing, I'm not even sure what this is from, um, but it is a seriously big lens, and uh, the aperture on it is absolutely beautiful. It's got um, a huge number of uh, aperture blades, and it is basically circular throughout its full operating range. Um, there you, go, you can see the specs on that there. It's a Kodak lens. F2.5, 7 inch, 178mm, 5x5. No idea what that's from, but it is a serious bit of engineering, serious bit of kit. And I have no idea how my grandfather, um, both my grand great-grandfather who owned this camera, my grandfather um, were serious photographers. This is my grandfather's photographer, uh, medium format camera. But yeah, there you go. So that's aperture in all those different kinds. This is what happens when you spend serious amounts on a huge lens. Um, and this is how you did it in 1900, when uh, it was very difficult to manufacture fine, fine watch-like components to go in camera lenses. There we go.